Hello and welcome to the shop. I'm going to do something today that is really not a woodworking project, but I'm doing it to uh, support my woodworking. In other words, I've got a display case here, and I'm going to make a little modification to it so that I can use it uh, on my table at a craft show. Let me show you the case I've got and talk a little bit about what I'm going to do. My father found this display case at a garage sale for only $5. Now, as I'm preparing to use it for a pen display case, I have already made a few small changes. One of those is, you might notice this gold embossed square. There was a second smaller square in the center of the square, and it said something to the effect of U.S. collector's coins. Uh, my wife simply took a razor blade and on the bottom side of the glass was able to scrape that embossing off. I did keep this one because I thought it was a nice little effect. The other thing I've done, and let me raise it up, this bottom piece used to be covered in a black felt. That black felt had gold embossed letters on it that would say things like Wheat Penny, Seated Liberty Dime, Buffalo Nickel. And basically, um, you would buy from this company the coin that would come in a little coin case and stick it in the slot and it would lean back at an angle and you could view your coins through the case. We peeled that felt off and we're going to flock this today with a light blue flocking. Now, the light blue flocking was not the first choice. We had a little mix-up uh, in communication, and I thought my wife liked the light blue. She actually wanted the white, so I bought the wrong one, and I didn't want to go back and have to buy a second kit. So we're going to go ahead and do this in light blue, and if I don't like it, after the show, I'll come back and take it off, and I'll flock it again with white. I've removed the plastic tray from the inside of the display case and I've gone ahead and run some painters tape around the edges. I also took some sandpaper and roughed up the surface both inside of the grooves and uh, on top or the flat surface on top. This is going to help the flocking, the adhesive for the flocking stick. A buddy of mine, Corey, gave me a roll of white paper. Uh, and I'm using this paper to cover my table saw top so as not to get any of the adhesive on the table saw. Here's a basic flocking kit. I think I paid 11 bucks, including shipping. And what you get is a little, kind of like an old mustard bottle, is what it reminds me of. You get a little bag of flocking, and you get some acrylic paint, which is the adhesive base that the flocking will stick to. What we're going to do is we're going to paint the entire surface area of this tray and then we're going to, using this bottle, blow the flocking onto the, the uh, wet surface and it will stick to the paint. Before I start, there's one other thing I want to show you. This is the lid to a box and I went ahead and took some of the same slick white paper and lined the interior of the box. And the reason for doing that is once I get the surface of this tray covered, I can lay it down in the box and I can spray the flocking all over the surface of the tray and any flocking that does not stick to the tray, I can take and recover it from the box and dump it back into the, the uh, mustard bottle uh, for future use. I'm ready to start applying paint to the surface of my tray. Now my initial thought was I'll just paint all the grooves, flock them, and then I'll come back and paint the top area, you know, maybe half and half, and flock it separately. Well, after reading the instructions, they strongly recommend against that. Um, their feeling is you should paint the entire surface, flock it all at once, because if you try to flock one side and then the other, you're going to see a definite seam down the, uh, down the center or separating the two areas. So they recommend using a larger brush. So I've got a little bit larger brush, and I'm going to go ahead now and try to very quickly cover the surface and, and to very liberally cover the surface with this acrylic paint.
with the surface covered, I now want to drop the tray into my box. Let's begin applying the flocking. One thing that I would recommend doing is putting the flocking in the bottle before you start to paint. It will save you some time. Uh, so I'm just going to dump some in there and hold it over the project as I do it. That way any spillage uh, actually gets used. This definitely would have been a good idea to do first. <laughs> Well, you can see this but well I'll be honest with you the spray bottle is not working real well there we go it's getting a little better wow Well, I don't know what else to do. Um, I can't wait too long because there's a breeze out here. My paint is beginning to dry. And the flocking is just not blowing out of the bottle quite like I expected it to. So, I'm going to do it this way. And this is the wrong way to do it. But... I don't see where I have a whole lot of choice. All right. Well, that didn't work out quite like I expected. Um, I think it's going to be okay, though. One thing, and truthfully, I thought about this as I was setting up, but I didn't do it. Make sure you put your flocking material into your applicator before you paint the surface of whatever it is you're, you're going to flock. Uh, that was a mistake I made. Uh, I do have an issue, though, because... It said to fill this up about halfway, and I got about halfway full, and it's supposed to you know, leave a little air in there so that when you squeeze it, the flocking comes out. As I was squeezing the applicator, I was getting almost no flocking uh, coming out of the tip. It was like it was plugged. So maybe I did something wrong there. Um, if any of you who do a lot of flocking, uh, I probably won't do this again. I don't know. Maybe I will. But if you do a lot of flocking, uh, and you can let me know what's wrong, maybe this is just the wrong kind of container, but it's what they sold me with the kit. Um, picking it up and dumping it on by hand, I got a nice thick layer on there, and you know, wiggling it back and forth, um, I was able to get good coverage. I'm very happy with the coverage I have. Sprinkling a little bit extra on there. There's one, one spot that looked a little light. But uh, I know it's going to be kind of hard to see. Let me hit that button. There you go. I've got nice coverage. Uh, there's still quite a bit of flocking laying on top of the surface. I'm just going to leave it on there. What the recommendation is, there we go, uh, just trying to adjust the focus on the camera because i got sunlight behind me and a dark shot 
uh, our sunlight in front of me and a dark shot behind me. But I'm going to take this now and set it aside. You're supposed to leave it for, I don't know, 15 to 17 hours. I'm just going to put a piece of cardboard over top of it to keep dirt or, you know, maybe a fly or something from landing on it and um, set it aside. Tomorrow morning, I'll check it. It should be good and dry by then, and we'll shake the excess flocking um, off of it and get that put back into the applicator, and um, we'll see how it looks. I'll go ahead and get it, you know, get the tape off the outside edges and get it installed back in the case, and I'll show you guys what it looks like. Hello, everybody. I'm back. It's been almost 24 hours of drying time. I think we're at about 22, 22 and a half hours. Let me show you what the tray for my display case looks like. For my first attempt, I don't think it was all that bad. Let me show you inside the case. You can see that over here on the right hand side, the flocking is a little bit light. Uh, it looks a lot better on the left hand side. Now why that is, I don't know. Maybe I started there and didn't get enough paint uh, because I'm, I'm left handed so I go from right to left when I paint. Uh, I'm not sure why that happened, but I'm okay with that. I still think it's gonna be a really nice way to display some of my specialty pens. I tell you what, let me go get a few of the nicer pens and I'll lay them in here and you can take a look at it and see what it looks like. Here's what it'll look like. I just put a few pins in there for effect. I didn't want to load it up. I think this will be really nice because this way, anything that I'm concerned about, my nicer pins, um, I have a lot of issue at the shows. I think I mentioned this before. I like to leave my slim lines out on the table because I want people to pick them up and to try them out because getting a pin in someone's hand that's, that's the first step. And then telling them the story, that brings it all together. And that's what, that's what will help me sell them. And I have a lot of trouble with kids. They see stuff like this. It's fancy, it's shiny, and they grab it and they play with it. And I've had kids drop pins and had blanks, uh, uh, kits get damaged, blanks get broken. Uh, I've had pins, like I've got a uh, fountain pen in there and it's got a screw on cap. And I've had kids that'll grab them and pull them apart and just strip the threads out. So I'm trying to, I, I don't like to put my pins behind glass because I want to get them into the customer's hand. But the nicer, more expensive pins I'm putting under glass. And if I get someone who's looking seriously, I'll pop the case open and say, hey, you know, check some of these out. And I'll let them hold them. I just, I just got to keep the little hands. I, I love kids. Don't get me wrong. I love them. Their curiosity amazes me. It never ceases to amaze me. Their thirst for knowledge. Um, but they are um, dangerous <laughs> when you have little shiny things like this. Uh, and I've lost quite a few pens that way. Believe it or not, I'm going to knock on wood. I've never had a pen stolen, but I've probably had half a dozen pens broken or damaged by, by children. So um, if you do have kids and go to a craft show, you kind of kind of keep an eye on them because, you know, some of the stuff that they get their hands on, um, you know, somebody worked hard to make that. Uh, most of the time, I don't get too concerned about the slim lines. I'll let the kids pick those up and I'll let them scribble all over the paper. You know, and you get some cute little notes and stuff, little pictures drawn. But the more expensive ones, I, I kind of shy away from letting the kids get a hold of those. So, eh, off the soapbox. Well, thanks for joining me today for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I know it's not one of my normal videos. It's not really a woodworking video, but it is somewhat woodworking related. It supports my woodworking because it allows me to display some of the items that I make at an upcoming show. Um, overall, I'm happy with the flocking. I, I'm a little disappointed that it was so thin. But I think that was, you know, first time doing it, it just, you know, I need a little more practice. I have about a half a container of flocking left after I dumped it back in the little mustard bottle thingy. Um, I'm thinking about getting some Super 77 and just lightly spritzing the tray and then uh, reflocking it that way. I don't know how well that'll work, um, but at this point I don't really feel like I have anything to lose. I think what I'll do though is I'll wait to get through the show. I'm going to go ahead and leave it alone for now because I don't want to mess it up. And I'm going to get through the show. And once I uh, finish the show, I think I'll come back and hit it with the Super 77 and uh, see if I can thicken it up a little bit. But beyond that, I like it. It's pretty cool. It's a neat idea. Um, I I'm keep thinking of what else I might be able to use it for in the future. And I haven't, I haven't come up with anything just yet, but that doesn't mean that I won't use it again. I'd like to thank you for joining me for the video. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon. Take care, everybody.